When people disagree on what a law means, it falls to the courts to determine how a law will be interpreted. Key to that determination is what is known as intent, what the Congress meant for the law to do when it was passed. For most of U.S. history, only the intent of Congress was considered by courts. However, President Ronald Reagan ordered the publication of signing statements, giving his interpretation of laws. It was the president's desire that courts take into account his intent. The question of intent figures prominently in a dispute between President Bush and Congress over a signing statement concerning the treatment of prisoners. Members of Congress point to a law passed in the fall of 2005 called the McCain Anti-Torture Amendment. They say it was their intent that all forms of torture or degrading treatment of prisoners be outlawed. This has been a gray area for the courts over time. In this gray area, the question is, who should set the rules? In the short term, surely the president can. In the longer term, the people should, through their elected representatives. We are their elected representatives. President Bush signed the bill, but he issued a signing statement saying he intended to enforce the law based on his interpretation of the Constitution. He said because the Constitution gives the president the sole power to wage war, he has the final say over the treatment of prisoners. Joining us now to talk about intent and signing statements are Judge Patricia Wald. She served on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit from 1979 to 1999, serving as Chief Judge from 1986 to 1991. She was a member of the President's Commission on the Intelligence Capabilities of the U.S. regarding weapons of mass destruction. Judge Wald also participated in a committee that studied presidential signing statements for the American Bar Association, the nation's largest group representing lawyers. Also joining us is Nicolin Quinn Rosencrantz, an associate professor of law at Georgetown Law School. During the first administration of President George W. Bush, he worked in the U.S. Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel. The office advises the president on constitutional issues and helps draft presidential signing statements. Professor Rosencrantz has testified about st signing statements before both the House Judiciary Committee and the Senate Judiciary Committee. Welcome to you both. Thanks, Gwen. Professor Rosencrantz, when we talk about intention, what did the Constitution mean for Congress's intention to count, the president's intention to count, who counts more? Well, it's a great and a difficult question, Gwen. I, I should say there are some people who don't believe that intention is the primary focus of statutory interpretation. So, some, what do you mean by that? Some believe that uh, the that when you're trying to figure out what a statute means, the your primary guide should be the words of the statute. So the text that Congress chose to pass, the text that the president chose to sign, and that trying to figure out what each congressman meant or thought in their head when they were voting for the bill or writing parts of the bill is uh, um, not the both not the point and also um, almost impossible to uh, to get at, to figure out. So a president in deciding whether to sign a bill should just set aside what Congress's intention is? When Congress passes a law these days, it may be a thousand pages long and it may have the most complex kinds of situations in it. It's not always possible for them to think of all of the possible situations that that law may apply to. They may not be able to articulate precisely what they mean. They're ordinary people, those congressmen. We're going to look at what they said officially when they were passing the law. And they have regular ways to say that. They have House reports and Senate reports, which are issued at the time that people are voting on the bill. Those two bodies come together and issue a conference report, which is supposed to embody what they think about the bill from both sides of the houses. You both brought your copies of the Constitution yes. with you. Andy, <laughs> you're established members of the bar, highly accomplished. Professor Rosencrantz, is there anything in the Constitution that gives us guidance on this issue about whose intention Congress or the President should be paying attention to when it comes to enforcing laws? Uh, the Constitution gives us a mechanism for making a bill into a law. Uh, Congress writes a text of a bill, and one house votes on that text, the other house votes on the text, 
president signs that tax, that's what the Constitution says about what becomes law. So intent these, is an extra constitutional concept. Well, so these committee reports that Judge Wald was referring to, the Congress does these, each House of Congress d um, does uh, develop these reports as they're um, developing legislation, but these reports are not referenced in the Constitution, and they are not voted on by both houses of Congress, and they are not signed by the president. So they are uh, they are extra constitutional in that sense. They are not law of the land. You would agree with that? You're right. It does not talk about intent. But I, I have to say, I mean, Congress people are ordinary human beings. The president is an ordinary human being. It is absolutely natural for somebody, if they are puzzled by something or they don't know the answer, to try to find out the context in which that particular piece of paper was written. And that's what President Reagan wanted to extend to the president. He wanted to extend the, the concept of legislative history to say, hey, look at what the president, when he signed that bill, thought about it, thought he was signing. Now, we can debate about whether right. that's a legitimate part of the total history. For judges who do think that intention matters, the question is whether it's just Congress's intent that matters or whether the president's intent also matters. Some people say, well, if you're going to look at congressional, at the congressional record or at congressional uh, reports, you should also look at presidential signing statements. The reason is just the president plays a role in the passage of legislation. So just like the House matters, just like the Senate matters, the president matters and what the president thought should matter. Again, these are the people who believe in intention to begin with. Well, as a member, a long-time member of the judiciary, maybe you can tell me how do judges think when they're presented with this kind of legislative history? My own feeling is the Constitution says the legislative power is in the legislature. Therefore, if we're going to look at intent at all, moving away from the uh, legislative history debate, if we're going to look at it at all, it is the intent of the Congress. Now, I have no objection if somebody looks, as occasionally they do, and say, hey, by the way, listen, the, the president also felt this way, or the president thought this, too. That shows you that, you know, reasonable people all over there. I would never see an instance in which if the president interpreted it one way and most of the congressional history was the other way, that a court would say, aha, we're going to side in this controversy with the presidential interpretation over the congressional interpretation. To what degree does this discussion about intent and presidential intent having to do specifically with signing statements affect the balance of power of whether the Congress's word gets taken over the president's word or vice versa, or in the end, it all gets thrown to the courts? This does implicate the balance of power between Congress and the president. If the courts were to take the position that Congress's intention mattered and the president's intention did not, that would shift power a bit toward Congress. And if the courts were to say that the president's intent mattered just as much as Congress's, that would shift power a bit toward the president. Now, I think Judge Walden and I would probably agree these things don't have that much of an effect one way or the other. So as a general matter, the text of the statute is your clearest guide to what it means. Judge Walden and I would agree. And is that true? The text is certainly where you go first, and if it's answered in the text, you don't go any further. Right. It's, it's where there's ambiguity, you move. In my case, I would yeah. move to the congressional history. Probably would only look at the presidential signing statement to see whether or not uh, he happened to agree. So we just should clarify, many of these signing statements say, I will interpret this statute to be consistent with the Constitution. That makes him the final arbiter of constitutionality of a statute when the Constitution says the legislative power he, if if a, a law has ten provisions in it, he says, okay, I'm okay with eight. The other two, I'm going to interpret according to my version of the Constitution, and I think they're unconstitutional, so I'm not going to do those two. That word goes to the executive branch. Maybe you can get a judicial case out of it, and but, maybe you can't. But I cannot believe that this Constitution meant him to have the final interpretation of the Constitution. But, but Judge, he's not saying that uh, he thinks those two provisions are unconstitutional. He's saying, I think these two provisions mean X, and yeah, X but, is but constitutional. He, but he doesn't. That isn't the way it's said. In 82, 82 separate cases, he used exactly the same wording as he used in the McCain Amendment, which said, I will interpret this to be consistent with my view of what my presidential inherent power is. The, one of the major issues facing separation of powers today is executive power. Has it been overinterpreted? Has it been uh, abused? Has Congress been put in a lower provision? 
Uh, he's saying, I'm just going to go ahead and take my constitutional version of what I think presidential power is and plant it as an imprint on any statute that comes my way. It sounds like this is going to end up in the end being <laughs> resolved in a court of law, probably. Judge Patricia Wald and Professor Nicholas Rosencrantz, thank you both very much. Thank you. For more information on signing statements and the Constitution, please visit AnnenbergClassroom.org. I'm Gwen Eiffel.